Hey DMs, uh, welcome back to Master of Dungeons. Uh, in this vid, I'm going to cover Call the Netherdeep. I'm going to do a full analysis of the whole uh, book uh, and uh, breaking it down, starting at chapter one and finishing with a combat analysis of Elixion and the final of the finale in chapter seven. I'll start with chapter one here, and over the next few days, do a, a breakdown of each chapter, looking at what I did, its strengths and weaknesses, and things that might need to be done differently. First though, let's have a brief chat over the introduction section of the book. For those of you who don't know the critical world, it breaks down its history and the history of the Apothean. Uh, something that my players told me at the end was something you should consider is uh, that right up until uh, they're in Netherdeep, the players aren't fully uh, certain if Elixion is a good guy or a bad guy. As And as there's so little information on him, it's impossible for them to find it out. So I suggest making Elixion as sympathetic as you possibly can whenever players encounter him in a vision. Always reiterate him as a hero as often as pop possible, and if any of your players worship Corlin, Evandra or Sernin, uh, maybe have them use visions, uh, share how Elixion is, but setting up these initial breadcrumbs will be important early on. If any of your players happen to be a paladin or a cleric, maybe having them uh, worship one of those gods or sort of like uh, giving them the idea that it would be more beneficial would also be, uh, be a wise idea. Also in the chapter, there's a level breakdown uh, by chapter or an event that is required uh, to level players up. It's by far the best thing in any of the D&D adventures um, I've played a few D&D adventures and other, none of them has something so handy for a DM and I constantly went back to it uh, in each chapter to track where my players were for their levels and to help guide them so they didn't miss out. Another thing is later on in chapter 5 and 6 your players will be underwater and there's some fun rules for underwater combat. The rules on water pressure that get ignored if players have Ruidian weapons or any magic items that give a swimming speed. So I highly recommend drip feeding items like this just for the fun of making your players discover this stuff and then hunting items later on. The next in this uh, section is the Ruidium stuff. Now cursed items and the such uh, make players fearful and Ruidium is no exception. They fear the exhaustion and corruption and would avoid using the weapons they had discovered until really they reached the nether deep and were left no choice. Remember, even exalt an exalted jewel of three prayers doesn't counteract the water pressures of the nether deep, so eventually they all need Ruidian weapons, uh, either in their body or in their hands. Uh, um, but I never told my players that Ruidian corruption could eventually kill them. Uh, they fear death uh, from too many levels of exhaustion as it is, and you really want them using these fun items, so I suggest you keep it yourself. In some of my previous videos, I gave a breakdown of each tier stat blocks for the rivals in Call of the Netherdeep, so I'm not going to go too in-depth here. In the intro, it gives you a nice breakdown for each member, and it's definitely worth studying up on each of the uh, before each of them beforehand. Uh, they have some really fun stories, but don't get too overwhelmed by the fact you potentially have five uh, NPCs that are constantly about. For a start, your players won't find every member of the team interesting. Let them choose who they like and move them to the forefront and leave the others as background noise with little to say unless fully interacted with. As the leader of the rivals, Io is really the only um, NPC that needs to be interesting from your side. So chapter one opens with a really fun series of competitions. There's some competitions you have to do in session, in session like the swimming race and, or riding the tortoises. But the pie eating and rice field uh, clearing uh, to spare yourself some time, set it up on your own. Roll these NPC swords in your uh, prep for the session, then you only have to focus on what the players roll in these events. The events I rolled and had results ahead of time were the pie eating contest, the arm wrestling, I rolled Maggie's contest against Merrill to see who would win in this if the players lost, the rice harvesting as this actually has a lot of elements with two teams of two and, the, and then the players to focus on. So it's best you just see how quickly your NPCs do, then you can follow any what any players are doing. The, sw the swimming competition, riddles and tortoise race are all uh, all have to be done in session, but the swimming especially ca uh, can be a great moment to be used as a sports uh, event narration. Also, the uh, the map, uh, the maze, sorry, um, 
uh, gives you the results of Maggie and Dermot, so you don't need to worry about uh, anyone else doing that. After you feel the players have been doing these events long enough and done enough exploring, uh, you then move to the final ceremony and the, ri and the rivals, and your players go into the Emerald Grotto for the race. The book gives you three different emotional states. Your rivals might be in, uh, be they friendly, indifferent or enemies on how they will react to your players. So unless something monumentally hap huge happens, there's no way the rivals would be enemies or friends at this stage and will only be indifferent as they've only just met your players and won't have had the chance to be anything but. If the players go second in the race and choose to fight Maggie, there's definite chance to become enemies. If your players go first, unless they really take their time, they'll probably get to the shark first, which is something I didn't uh, think about. A giant shark for a level 3 party is actually quite deadly. If your players are injured before the fight starts or get injured during the fight, the shark's blood frenzy kicks in and it gets advantage on its attacks. And with a plus 9 to hit, doing 3d10 plus 6 damage can easily kill the party wizard and on a crit even kill a barbarian with enough of a hit. 6d10 plus 6 damage is deadly to even a mid-level party, let alone a low-level one. So it's something to be aware of. But of course, having different rivals turn up and helping the party after turn two can really turn the tide and make the start of uh, friends or enemies, depending on how your players react to this. In my call the Never Deep Party, my, uh, they decided to block off the prayer site and viewed the rivals as thieves trying to steal their loot. So we've already set a path to dislike them pretty early on. Inside the prayer site is your first opportunity to introduce Elixion, and start that sympathy I spoke of earlier. Personally, even, even if the rivals are hostile at this stage, I don't think stealing the Jewel of Three prayers is the best choice. Make sure your players get it, as then it will start them deep into the adventure, and you won't be forcing them into it another way. It adds player agency into the story, rather than railroading them into it, and potentially derailing the campaign immediately, because we all know how much players love to be railroaded. It also gives them a super cool magic item, and anyone who don't uh, know what a vestige of diversion is, it gives you a moment to let them roll some history checks and learn how monumentally amazing these items are. Anyway, this has been my look at the first chapter in uh, Call the Netherdeep. Sorry that it's been such a while since I've made a video. Uh, my wife uh, recently gave birth to our second daughter. So uh, I've been busy doing that. But over the next few days, I will be working on the next few chapters of this book. Uh, um, next is the look of chapter two, which is The Road to Bazardan, and is a much shorter chapter than anything else. Chapter one is broken down into two sessions, one the competitions and two the Emerald Grotto. But The Road to Bazardan is only a single session. So thanks for listening. Please hit me up with some likes and some subscribes. And hopefully this helps you when you start your own call the Netherdeep. Until next time, happy hunting.